we started a collection called The Ghost, talking about the Holy Spirit. And I want to get back to it. Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 1, excuse me, verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And I know this title is a little bit opportunistic, uh, but forgive me if you will. I'm going to preach from the title, You Need Power. <laughs> Hopefully that's only a spiritual thing. And by now you have your electricity back on. Um, I'm going to, we fought, we fought for electricity. We got it Wednesday night and I praise God for that in this building. <clears throat> And uh, I have a passion to see people filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's a passion of my life. And next Sunday, we're going to be praying for anyone that wants to experience the power and the presence of God and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Next Sunday, I'm doing a short message, and we're just going to pray for people to receive and be baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be an incredible Sunday. I want to encourage you to be here. And a lot of people have an awareness of the Holy Spirit in general, but have a very little understanding on the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the power of the Holy Spirit. And my life is marked by being brought up in a church that believed in the power of the Holy Spirit. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the age of five. And people are like, it's just hype and emotionalism. I was five. I didn't know how to get hyped like that. Like, <laughs> like well, it's just ecstatic gibberish that people teach you. No one taught me ecstatic gibberish. I was just five years old, and I walked up in front of a church on a Sunday night, and some people started praying for me, and the, the power of the Holy Spirit hit me. And I spoke in tongues, not like man taught me, not like was culturally given to me, I spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And it marked my life. And one of the things I believe that God has placed on our church in the form of a mandate, of an anointing, is I, I feel like we're supposed to lead the way in believing and introducing people to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Where other people get weird about it or don't want to talk about it, come on, let's never be ashamed of the Holy Spirit. Not a shame. And how do, how do we know the baptism of the Holy Spirit is important? I, I want you to think about this. Jesus said, hey, disciples, hold off on preaching the gospel to the world. <laughs> how many of you know it's pretty important that we preach the gospel to the whole world? Like that's, that's one of the major things. And Jesus goes, hey, y'all hold off on reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because I want you to wait in Jerusalem until you receive power, until you're endued with power. They, they needed, and we need today, power. And one of the things we need in order to receive the power of God is we need to know our need. Like we need to know that we need the Holy Spirit. We need to know that we need the power and the presence of God. Because how many of you know, if you know you really need something, you will be intentional about getting that thing in your life. Like that, that becomes a big, a, a, a dominant thing in your life. It's like, man, I need that. I'm going to get that. And one of the biggest hindrances that people have to receiving the, the power and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not knowing how bad you need the Holy Spirit. Like how much we are dependent on the Holy Spirit. And I, and I know there's people that have been taught, you know, wrong doctrine or people have had bad experiences. But I really believe beyond all of that, the opposition to the Holy Spirit is people just don't know that they need it. That the opposition isn't necessarily the strong disbelief. It's just settling for less than what God has for us. It's settling for our plan instead of God's plan. It's, it's just settling for what we want. And, and one of the prevailing thoughts when, when you talk about, hey, there's a, there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit, people are like, well, I, I already know Jesus. I, I already know Jesus. I have a relationship with Jesus. 
I'm already saved. What more do I need? You know, I've already got eternal life. What else do I need? I already served God. feel like I hear his voice. Like, I'm, what else do I need? And I want you to think about this. Jesus told his disciples, he said, to wait on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I would submit to you that there was no stronger relationship than those disciples who spent three and a half years traveling around, spending night and day, talking, living, eating, doing everything together with Jesus. Come on, they had a great relationship with Jesus Christ. I would submit to you that there is no greater disciple course than traveling around and hearing firsthand account from Jesus about the kingdom of God and about the gospel and day and night and then for 40 days after the resurrection resurrected Jesus conducts a discipleship course for 40 days teaching them post resurrection if you want to talk about somebody that knows God and has a relationship with God these men had a relationship with God and you want to talk about being a believer in the gospel they watched Jesus die be buried and they witnessed the resurrected Jesus. You want to talk about being gospel-believing people. These are gospel-believing people. And Jesus said, no, but you still need to wait. You, you've got a relation. You know me. I've taught you the kingdom of God. You've experienced, literally firsthand encountered the gospel of Jesus Christ. But if you're going to go where I want you to go, and you're going to fulfill the calling that I want you to fulfill, you need something that's going to come from on high. Amen. And I want to tell you this. We don't need power to do what we want to do, but we sure need power to do what God is calling us to do. We, we don't need power. We don't need power to fulfill our will, but we need power to fulfill God's will. And I think many times we don't seek the power of God because we're happy with what we can produce and we fail to recognize what God really wants to produce in our life. That we can do what we want to do and we can settle for our work and we can settle for what we want to do and what we can work out for ourselves, but we, can need, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to me, we don't need the power of the Holy Spirit to live an ordinary life, but we sure need the power of the Holy Spirit to live a supernatural life. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And it amazes me because we, we read this book right here and we live an ordinary life while we read a supernatural book and we have this disconnect between what we live and what we read. And I want to tell you, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that makes this book come to life in your life. It's what moves us from the ordinary to the extraordinary. There are healing, there are stories of healing in this book. There are miracles in this book. There are deliverances in this book. There are signs, wonders, and miracles. There is speaking in tongues, all of this in this book. The question isn't whether or not it's in this book. The question is all of that in our lives. It's not is that in the Bible. The question is, is it in the church? We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is, this is just personal observation, but I've, I've been around for a while. And, I, and I've, I've noticed something. Like regardless of what, what a person's spiritual background is. And when you talk about miracles and speaking in tongues and casting out demons and, and, and believing in signs and wonders, like that's, that's typically referred to as... As Pentecostal, they'll be like, hey, you're a Pentecostal, that's, that's great, that's fine. Here's my experience, is everybody becomes Pentecostal when they go on the mission field. They get outside of the United States of America and they realize, oh, this isn't, this isn't normal. We're in a supernatural environment. And they're surrounded by witchcraft and voodoo and, and, and all of this stuff. And all of a sudden, they have no problems believing and casting out demons and needing miracles. And like, maybe we need to speak in tongues right now. Something needs to happen right now. Like, we, we're in, we're, we're, this is something else. Can I just encourage you? You don't have to wait to get a chance to go to Africa to experience the power of God. You can have that right here, right now. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to move us from an ordinary church, come on, to a supernatural church. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to enable us not to do what we can do, but come on, enable us to do what God can do through us. There is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We need it because we can't do what God wants us to do without the power of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of what people are struggling with is we settle because we're so used to normal, we don't know that God wants to do exceeding. 
And they had such a need that Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem until they were endued with power. And they were supposed to wait until they experienced the power of the Holy Ghost. And in, 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 the, in our modern era, we have elevated knowledge, rightfully so. I'm, I'm not trying to, this isn't a, a, a negative statement. This is just a known reality. We live in a, a biblically illiterate culture today. Yeah. It's, just a, it, it's just a known thing that people don't know the Bible like they used to know. And so rightfully so, come on, we need the preaching of the truth of the word of God. We, we, we need instructions in righteousness. We need, we need biblical teaching, which is that, that all of that is great. But here's the problem is we've elevated knowledge and we've downplayed experience. We, we've made Christianity something knowledge-based, which is wonderful. There's things we need to know. We need to be students. We need to be diligently studying the word of God. But we can't, we can't emphasize knowledge and then downplay experience like it's inconsequential. Because what Jesus did, he's like, I've spent three and a half years teaching you, instructing you, parable after parable, story after story, demonstrating the power of God. You, you've been downloaded knowledge and information and wisdom from God. God himself has come in human form to teach you. And Jesus, this is what Jesus did. He's like, I've given you information but I don't want you to just have information. I also want you to have experience. And Jesus did something. He elevated experience to the same level of knowledge. And we have a Christianity that goes, just teach me, but I don't want anything to do with that supernatural stuff. And we need a church to go, no, we're going to teach you the Bible, but you can also experience the God of the Bible. Because the power of God is not a lesser thing than the knowledge of God. Because we need a transformative experience with the power of God. A transformative experience. And I wonder today how many people have a knowledge of God, but have never experienced the power of God. And Jesus told them to go wait. Because there was going to be a clear, undeniable experience that they were supposed to wait on. He said, you're going to know. You're going to know when you've experienced power. Come on, you, know, you probably didn't have to wonder when the electricity came back on at your house. When I, when I was a kid in our garage, we had like a little storage room. And for whatever reason, the light switch had been, the cover had been broken off of it. And I was just a dumb kid, you know. And I didn't even look. I just went to turn on the light. And I stuck my hand behind the light switch. I didn't have to wonder if I touched power. <laughs> like there was no question that I touched something or that something touched me. Amen. Praise God. Jesus, and most people think the Holy Spirit is just like, yeah, I had a warm sensation. I think I got the Holy Spirit. I almost, I almost got a goosebump. Something happened. No, Jesus said there's going to be a tangible, undeniable manifestation. It's going to be audible. It's going to be visible. You're going to know you got touched by the power of the Holy Ghost. You're not going to have to wonder. I want to say, I want to dare, can I just dare to say this? You don't have to believe by faith you have the Holy Ghost. You can know by experience you have the Holy Ghost. I'm going old school, calling it Holy Ghost. They named it the ghost, so let's just go. He said, you, you, you know. There's going to be a, a manifestation of the tangible, undeniable, visible, audible, palpable presence of God. You're not going to have to wonder if you received it. You're going to know that the power of God came in your life. Acts chapter 2, what happened? The sound of a rushing mighty wind, tongues of fire set up on each of them, and they all spoke in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave the utterance. In Acts chapter 8, the Samaritans had believed the word of God. They had been baptized. They had a knowledge of God. They had faith in 
in God. But as of yet, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, hadn't fallen on them. So they called in the big dogs, Peter and John. And they came in and they laid hands on them. And there was such a manifestation of the power of God that a sorcerer named Simon said, how do I buy that power to do what you just did? He didn't have to wonder if they got it. He saw the power of God fall on the Samaritans. Acts chapter 10, Cornelius is a Gentile, and Peter is called by God in a vision to go preach the gospel to the Gentiles, which was fall for them, a, a, a new revelation. And as he's preaching, they see the power of God fall, and Cornelius and his whole household begin to talk in tongues, and they go, hey, what happened in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2? It just happened in Cornelius' house. In Acts 19, Paul finds disciples who, of John the Baptist in Ephesus, and he says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed and they said we haven't heard of a Holy Spirit Paul prays for them and they begin to speak in tongues and they begin to prophesy and nobody had to wonder whether or not they were touched by the power of God they were touched by the power of God and there is a transformative experience in your life that takes you from who you used to be to who God wants you to be that begins to transform you that's why the Peter that denied Christ in the crucifixion is the Peter that stands up on the day of Pentecost and says, let me preach to you who just crucified Jesus, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a transformative encounter. And people go, it's just the book of Acts. No, Paul said to the church in Galatians, how did you receive the Holy Spirit and experience miracles except by faith? In other words, Galatians was built on the power of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 2, 4, and 5. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in the demonstration and the of the Spirit and the power so that your faith, watch this, might not rest in the wisdom of men, but I've got an experience with the power of God. We don't transform to get the power of God. The power of God is what transforms us. It's the demonstration of the Holy Spirit that can transform your life. It'll take you from depressive to overflowing with joy. It'll take you from timid to having some boldness in your life. It'll take you from being afraid and it'll give you courage. It'll take you from being bound and it'll set you free. It'll take you from being ineffective and it'll make you influential. That's the power of the demonstration of the Spirit of God. It's the undeniable, undeniable experience of the power of God. It's transformative in your life. I understand faith. I understand believing God. I understand things that we can't explain. But there's also an experience. You're like, I don't believe that. That's all right. You didn't have the experience I had when I was five years old. If you've never had steak, don't tell me steak isn't good. I've had the steak and it's good. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, don't tell me it's not good. I've had the Holy Ghost, it's good. And some of you are against it and you need to ask, why did God bring you here to sit under my ministry? Why did he bring you here to sit under a tongue talker who believes in the power of God? Maybe he has a plan for you. And it's not. And they're like, oh, well, that's good for you. You know, your pastor, you need that. I just, I just want to go to Publix and get my groceries. <laughs> no, it's not for special people in special places. It's not for just missionaries who are going to dark parts of the world. In Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 8, in Acts chapter 10, in Acts chapter 19, God batted a thousand. He didn't miss one person. If there were 120 people, there were 120 flames. God's got the power of the Holy Spirit for your life. Jesus told them, he said, wait. Because he wanted them to go further by the power of God than they could go on their own. In fact, I really believe this. I don't believe if you could have popped into that moment before Jesus told them, 
I don't think any of those guys would have had a vision of like, hey, we're going to go from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria. We're going to go all around the world. Knowing the small places and the life that they came from, they would have never have envisioned that for their life. Could I just dare to say God's got a bigger vision for your life than you have for your life? God's got bigger plans for you than you even see right now. And he's like, no, you don't. You don't understand. What I want to do in your life, you're not going to do it through your strength. You're going to need my strength to go. You're going to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. Jesus knew that they didn't see it, but he knew where he wanted them to go, and they needed power. And here's the third one is we need to be enabled by the power of God. Enabled. The Holy Spirit plays a role in our salvation because it's the Holy Spirit that regenerates us to salvation. We, we become spiritually alive by the regenerative power of the Holy Spirit. There's the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, which is something different than the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And people get legalistic and be like, hey, you, you know, I, I believe that can happen at the same time. And if you're a theologian, I'm what we call, it's called second blessing. That's not a matter of theology. That's just a matter of practicality. The reason why I'm second blessing is because people didn't get it the first time. So let's go get it the second time. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And I, I, I believe there's a lot of people wondering why they can't be more effective in their life. Why they can't maybe break through to some places and do some things maybe that they're believing God for, or maybe it's things you don't even, you can't even imagine what God wants to do. But there's, there's certain levels of effectiveness that we can't get to, and that's because the power of the Holy Spirit begins to work. The Holy Spirit, in, in so many ways, is really the activity of God. Whenever you read about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is always moving. Even the first mention of the Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, the Spirit of God was moving, hovering, brooding on the face of the waters. And I believe there's a lot of people wondering why they can't go somewhere. It's because you need the activity of God to take you there. Why can't we break through certain levels of effectiveness? It's because the power of the Holy Spirit takes us further than our natural abilities can take us. The power of the Holy Spirit takes us further than our own natural gifting can take us. The power of the Holy Spirit takes us further than our natural effort can take us. And it's amazing. It's amazing the ability that God has given us as human beings. It's amazing the natural giftings that we have. It's amazing what we can accomplish when we put our minds to it. We can do a lot. God gave us the ability. But can I submit to you that if you want God's power, if you want to go where God wants you to go, you're going to need the power of the Holy Spirit to help you get there. And that's the thing that we, we, we work hard and we see some things happen and we go, man, that's what God wanted to happen. Let's not assume that in all we do, that's all God wants to do. Let's not assume in all that we've done that that's all that God can do. Let's believe that he wants to do even greater things. In fact, I'm thankful for the privilege to gather and worship in the name of Jesus Christ. Like what, a, what a privilege. And after last Sunday, I'm really thankful to gather in this room and worship the name of Jesus Christ. Our first ministry is just simply to gather in this room and minister to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for the privilege and the opportunity to preach the Bible. It, it really is the honor of my life to get to do what I get to do. Wouldn't do anything else in the world unless you offered me more money. I'm just joking. I'm, play, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. I wouldn't. This is what I love to do. What a, what a privilege it is to just get to open the Bible and preach. I'm thankful for a church that serves its community like our church has served over the past couple of weeks. It's so beautiful. It's so incredible. But can I submit to you that Jesus didn't say we would have good church. He said we would do greater things. Amen. That there would be something greater that would happen. 
And I think there is something greater that many of us need. I think there's something greater that the church needs today. In our modern era, we've just settled for things that we can do. Come on, let's believe for what God can do in our church and in our life. And if you're wanting, if you're like, man, there has to be something more. I want to tell you the more is the power of the Holy Spirit. And my encouragement to you over this week as we prepare for a Holy Spirit Sunday is I want to encourage you to follow the instructions of Jesus. And he just told his disciples, he was like, hey, press pause. I know there's a lot of urgent things. I know there's an urgency to reach the world. I know, I know you feel the drive to go out and, and do something. You, you, you know the message, you know the kingdom, you know, and he's like, but I just want you to press pause. My encouragement to you is I know there's a lot of things you wanna do and there's a lot of places you wanna go and there's all kinds of urgency things in life, but if you've never experienced the power of God, how about we just press pause and we just say, I'm going to wait on you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to seek you, Holy Spirit. We're going to intentionally begin to prioritize and seek the empowerment of the presence of God, the experience of the presence of God. There is a tangible, palpable, come on, undeniable manifestation of the presence of God for your life. I just want to lead you this week. Let's know our need. Let's not just settle. Man, I'll, just, I'll go there. Let's not just settle because we got a 401k now and we got a house now and we got a car now. No, there's some supernatural things that God wants to do in your life. There's some places God wants to take you. There's something greater than all of that. It's the power and presence of God. And it's the Holy Spirit that regenerates us. It's the blood of Jesus that cleanses us so that we can receive the fullness of the power of God in our life. And regeneration is just simply this. It's just called being born again. That the Holy Spirit of God awakens us as we call on the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleanses us the Holy Spirit awakens us so that we can be vessels, conduits, if you will, to the presence and the power of God. We're not who we used to be. Come on, we're a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. And today, I just want to pray for people. That maybe you just, you don't like who you are. Maybe you're in a place where you know you've made a mess of where you're at. Here's the good news. There is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. God wants to fill your life. But there's also a regeneration of the Holy Spirit. And that's when God takes care of the old you so you can be the new you he's called you to be. So you can step into that place of receiving his presence and his power. And by faith, we make a brand new start with God. Come on all over this room. If you just need a, a new beginning, you need a fresh start, come on, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the presence of God in this place to, to change you from the inside out, to, to rewire you on the inside, to make you a brand new person, a brand new man, a brand new woman in Christ Jesus. And I believe there's people all over this room right now who are just ready. You're ready, you're ready. You're ready for a new beginning. Come on, can we just believe by faith that the Holy Spirit is about to give you a new start right now. All over this room, if you need a new beginning in Christ, if you need to call on his name, you know you need to be a brand new man, a brand new woman in Jesus Christ. You need that, you need that moment of a new beginning. I want you to pray this prayer with me all over this room. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you now. Come into my heart, come into my life. Forgive me of my past, wash away my sin. Make me a new person. I receive you now as my leader and my Lord, and I'll never be the same. 
in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, would you stand on your feet? And give God some praise all over the room. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. If you just prayed that prayer, come on, that's a faith journey. And by faith today, I want you to make a declaration that you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I'm going to count to three. And if that's you and you just prayed that prayer, I want you to shoot a hand in the ear and I want you to make it a declaration today that today, come on, is a new beginning, a fresh start for your life that by the Spirit, the regenerative Spirit of God, you are born again. You ready for this Coast Life family? Come on, I'm going to count to three. And if that's you, I want you to shoot your hand in the air. Come on, on the count of three. One, two, if that's you, three. Shoot it up right now. Shoot it up right now. Today. Brand new, made new. In Jesus' name. Come on, give them a great hand.